Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how optical random features can be used to accelerate molecular dynamic studies, in particular in the case of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the virus responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. This work was first presented at the Women in Machine Learning and Data Science Paris Berlin Meetup back in April 2020 and has also been introduced in two blog posts, to, so make sure to check the video description for more information. So let's get started. First, let me introduce some molecular dynamics background. So the goal of molecular dynamics is to study the behavior and characteristics of molecules by following the trajectories of their atoms. However, because atoms are constantly fluctuating and these fluctuations occur on the scale of the femtoseconds, that is 10 to the minus 15 seconds, that means that we need to take time steps of 10 to the minus 15 seconds to observe our molecules. However, chemists are interested in large-scale transitions, which are called also conformational changes, and typically occur on scales of the microsecond up to the milliseconds. So that means that we need to take more than a billion time steps in order to observe one of those transitions. Because of that, methods have been developed in order to enhance sampling, that is, the exploration of all the different shapes a molecule can take, as well as the energy associated with this molecule. So to illustrate this point, let me introduce you to Remy the rat. So imagine that we have a rat, here it's called Remy, and he lives in a world that is filled with holes, and we want to be able to say where the holes are and how deep they are. However, we are not able to see them ourselves. So what we can imagine that we do is that we attach a GPS tracker to Remy's back and we let him wander around. At some point, Remy is going to fall in some hold and we are going to know that he's trapped because in our, on our GPS tracker, we're going to see that his position is not changing for a long period of time. And so once he's trapped, we imagine that we have some kind of machine that pours some water so that Remy floats and at some point is freed from the hole. So after some time, Remy will have observed all the holes and we know how deep, they, how deep they are by knowing how much water we poured in order to free Remy. And so that's the ba basic idea of enhanced sampling methods that are performed by chemists so that they can observe transitions between uh, one state to another. However, there is a way to make such methods more efficient and that's using NUMA, which I'm gonna detail in the next slide. And this boils down to, instead of having just the GPS tracker on Remy the rat, we also attach an accelerometer. This way, we can say that Remy is trapped, not because we've been looking at our coordinates, and we've seen that he hasn't been able to move for a while, but also because we saw on the accelerometer that he had a fall before, and so we know that that means that he is in a hole. But so, what is NUMA? NUMA is the no prior knowledge exponentially weighted moving average. And so let me explain what it is exactly. So let's start with YUMA, which is an online change point detection algorithm. The idea behind YUMA is the following. So we have a, seri a series of points, XT. In our case, those points will actually be vectors that contain, for example, all the coordinates of all the atoms of a certain molecule that we're studying, and we want to know when some kind of change is happening in this series. So the idea behind Yuma is we compute a statistic ZT iteratively according to this formula, where lambda is a forgetting factor that basically says how much we weight the most recent points compared to the most ancient points, and a function psi of the time series that I will talk about more in the next slide. So having computed these statistics, we say that there is a change point once our statistics becomes too different from a certain in-control value. The problem of this method is that this in-control value and this threshold needs to be user-defined, and we have no way of knowing if some values that work well for a given data set will work well for another data set which is not very satisfying if we want to use something that would be valid for any molecular dynamic studies. To remedy this issue, the authors of the NUMA paper introduced the following idea. 
Instead of computing just one statistic, we compute two of them with different forgetting factor, and we say that there is a change point if the difference between these two statistics become larger than a certain threshold that is calculated adaptively. Moreover, the authors also give ways to calculate these forgetting factors and this adaptive threshold um, according to heuristics that will always be um, well defined for a given dataset. Because of that, this method required no prior knowledge of the dataset, which is where the n comes from in NUMA. So now let's talk about this function psi. Well, the authors of the NUMA paper also said that a good choice for psi is to use random features. Random features can be computed either using CPU-based algorithm, such as random Fourier features or RFF or fast food FF, but we can also compute them optically using random projections that are computed on light on Aurora OPU. So now let's say, see how this can be applied to molecular dynamics. So the idea is that we have a trajectory of a certain molecule calculated over a certain period of time, and we calculate the, stat the new mass statistics in order to detect conformational changes that are big changes in the molecule um, that we can observe um, here in this video. So as an example, this uh, trajectory has been produced by the supercomputer Anton. It is a trajectory of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which comprises uh, a little under 47,000 atoms. And you can see that in this video, we see the molecule initially bound together. We see it split and then detach furthermore. And the statistics is well able to detect these changes. So that's really promising. But now let's talk a bit about performances. In this plot, we compare, we compare the performances of NUMA uh, using CPU-based algorithm to compute, to compute random projections versus uh, using the Aurora, the Lighton Aurora OPU to compute random projections. And as you can see, even though for small number of atoms, the OPU is faster, but not that much. As the number of atoms grow larger, the difference also grows larger. Moreover, the Lighton, using the Lighton Aurora OPU to compute random projections also has a huge advantage, which is which is it has a much lower memory footprint. Indeed, when we use CPU-based uh, algorithm, we need to somehow store the random matrix used to make random projections, and that costs a lot of memory. However, in the case of the light on OPU, it's literally the optics that does uh, the random projection, and so there is no need of storing the matrix. Because of that, we are even able to work on much larger scale, so remember the trajectory that I showed you before? Well, the Anton supercomputer also produced the same trajectory, but including all the atoms that surrounded the proteins. So not just the protein itself, but the water atoms, the ions that were around, everything. And that amounts to over 700,000 atoms, that is over 2 million features, since each atom has three uh, coordinates. And even with that, we are able to analyze and predict correctly when changes are happening in this structure. Now, you might be thinking that 700,000 atoms is a lot. However, molecular dynamics trajectories usually deal with the millions of atoms, and it is even predicted that in the future they will be able to simulate over billions of atoms. So 700,000 really isn't that much, and we'll be ready to analyze them using light on Aurora OPU. So the takeaway message of this presentation is that NUMA is a great way to detect conformational changes that are large-scale changes in mole molecular dynamic simulations and to help explore the energy landscape of these molecules. And we saw that optical random features are particularly well suited to this task because of their speed, but also the fact that they have virtually no memory cost. Thank you for your attention, and I invite you to check the video description for more information, and in particular for the link to the blog posts, and check the references here if you have any interest in the subject.